uh, I and David Cox at, at UCSF had written a, a grant to the NIH to, to see if we could get funding for it. We were funded. We started our genome center and then moved it to Stanford in early 1993, where we were mapping a human chromosome, uh, and then later all the chromosomes, and then starting to try to sequence. And what happened during that time is um, we, uh, really the whole world didn't know how we were going to manage to do this for as many base pairs as it needed to be sequenced. Clearly the technologies had to get better and better and better. But meanwhile we just started s slogging through and sequencing sort of chromosome by chromosome. So our group ended up the DOE, the Joint Genome Institute, and our group as part of the DOE, uh, of the JGI, uh, started sequencing three human chromosomes, chromosomes 5, 16, and 19. And so uh, on chromosome 5, uh, we have this region which is called the SMA region, which is a spinal muscular atrophy region, uh, which is a, a devastating disease. Uh, and it turns out it's one of, if not probably, the most complicated area in the human genome. I like to think of it as my chromosome. And, it, uh, and so just to address this, this small region of about uh, 1.4 megabases on chromosome 5 actually took hundreds and hundreds of uh, sequencing attempts. This is the SMA region here on chromosome 5, right here. Um, and, and all of these squares here are repeat copies on the SMA region. Still to today, we can't sequence the SMA region even with our current amazing technology. We can get very close and we can sequence the short version of it, which has one copy, but the, the, the two copy version is still incredibly difficult to reproduce even with our, our current um, long range sequencing technology that we use for producing many, many genomes. So chromosome 19 was the chromosome that it um, was one of the hardest chromosomes because it was very gene rich and it had a very high GC content. So at the end of the genome project, we um, printed out all the sequence in chromosome 19. And we have one of these for all the three chromosomes that we finished. So I don't know if you can see that, but that's just a random page of human chromosome 19. Each of these little uh, spots is a, is a base pair. Um, so this is, this is the sequence of chromosome, chromosome 19. Um, and of course, as you can imagine, chromosome 5 book is probably about double the size. Basically, in the end, uh, five laboratories, including the Joint Genome Institute, uh, produced about 90% of the, of the genome sequences and, uh, for the first genome sequence. We set a deadline of uh, uh, April, in April uh, 2003, that at the midnight on the, on the last day, all the data had to be submitted for the, for the finished human genome. And it was pretty much finished with still errors and some ga gaps and things like that, but it was really high quality by then. We, so we set this uh, deadline, and it turns out um, our laboratory, the Joint Genome Institute and our lab at Stanford, which is part of the Joint Genome Institute, was the furthest west laboratory. So we had until midnight uh, Pacific time uh, that April. And uh, uh, it's it, a lot of work not only to finish it, but then even submit it. So um, Jane Grimwood and Jeremy Schmutz generated our, and our laboratory, we had a lot of people working in the lab, generated all these data of finished sequence from the JGI's primary sequence. And then uh, Jeremy, um, who's a master at computational biology and, and really hard problem of doing the assemblies and putting things to all of the little pieces of s DNA sequence together to make a final chromosome, had done that, but then was submitting all day long on that last day in April. And um, uh, he, um, I, I have a little uh, icon of a clock showing that he did the la he submitted the last one at 18 minutes till midnight. So that was the last one to formally go in uh, to the finished human genome sequence. A little drama, that was the idea. <laughs>